Should the Army pay students to do military training? 0207 862 is the number to give us a ring. Youngsters preparing to go to university or taking a gap year could be paid to take part in summer boot camps under plans to build a citizen army. Now, the idea is from General Sir Patrick Sanders and the hope is to inspire young people to join the reserves afterwards. So is this a good idea to help students earn a few bob? Do let us know your thoughts. Susie, what do you think about this? Uh, Would you be encouraging your daughter to do Every it? year, and you will notice this, before the budget, a month or two before the budget, some bigwig from the Ministry of Defence will come out and say, the armed forces can't do what we want them to. We need more money, everybody. We, we need are, another billion. We are in and unusual circumstances at the yes, moment. Yes, we are. And what's happened is that because things have been cut and cut and cut and cut and cut and cut and cut for many, many years, we don't have the armed forces that do do the things that we would require them to do, whether it's uh, humanitarian missions around the world or, you know, intervening in the Yemen or anything else. We're just not able to do it, really. We don't, we can't really be the ally to some of our, our friends that we'd like to be and all the rest of it. But um, I do think if you pay students to come to a military style boot camp for a month the only students who are going to sign up are the kind who already want to go to military style boot camps and they're the ones who are going to join the armed forces anyway so all you're doing is paying people to join up at this point you're not paying for people who are going to have you know uh, conditions or diagnoses on the not the particular will or interest in, in wanting to go you're not going to drag people there who aren't previously otherwise going to want to be there. Do you think so, Larry? What about kids that aren't sure of what they want to do in life and it okay. might just open up an avenue they hadn't thought of? This is one of those things that, you know, boomers think is a fantastic idea. Yes, get them out of bed away from the Xbox and they can go and do a nice healthy boot camp. What's wrong with that? I, I, well, exactly. I would be thrilled, but I have no chance of getting any of my kids to do this because the idea of a boot camp, they'd just be horrified for. for. I think we've got a couple of problems here. One is that the whole kind of defund the police and anti-establishment, you know, shtick, what we've had particularly for the last five years, has knocked on from the police into the military. Whereas, you know, I remember that my son was interested when he was in his mid-teens about going into the army, and now he wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. So I think we've got a, a, an image problem about, you know, what the, the army and the navy and the air force are for. Um, and I also think that, that it, it's also about finances. You, the kind of kid who takes a gap year is a nice middle-class kid, parents have got money. Um, actually, uh, one way to get people to join the army would be to do more of what they do in America, which is whereby you join up and they help you get a degree. So it, it enables you... So it's part you're, of your university Yeah, training. because for a lot of kids from poorer backgrounds, you know, going to university is really difficult financially. Mm. And if, they, if by going into the military, like they do in America, you were able to also get your education paid for, I think that would be a really big draw. They do do some of that, especially with the medical stuff. But one of the issues you've also got is you have scandals with the military and the armed forces. Mm. I mean, I write for the Mirror about the nuclear veterans who are finding now that their medical records have been hidden from okay. them for 70 years. And if, you, if you're if trying to have people and trying to force them into going, and they're going to maybe go have to witness nuclear bomb tests or take part in other risky manoeuvres, and they don't feel they're going to be safe and looked after and protected so there in the way a, they should be an by their employer. And PR involved in this. Uh, well, let's bring in Major General Tim Cross. Welcome to the show. What do you think about this suggestion? Do you think this would be a good idea? Well, I think you've got to set it into the context of what Patrick has been talking about for quite a few years in his time as CGS, uh, and your panellists have touched on a couple of them. The size and shape of the British Army is, is far, too, far too low. We're below critical mass in terms of being a serious player, um, and everybody, I think, now recognises that. That's been going on for quite a while. Uh, and what Patrick's saying is, and he has been saying for some time, is not, not just that we need a, a larger army, regular, and a larger reserve, but we need to prepare for the fact that in two, three, five, ten years' time, we might be involved again in a land war in Europe, particularly if the Russians succeed in Ukraine and then try and move into the Baltic states and so on. Now, my own view is, uh, of this is I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not, I may be part of the boomer generation, but I'm, I'm not one that's sweepingly judgmental about our young people. You know, they're not a snowflake generation. But I do think the principle of using uh, our young, or allowing our young people to engage in a sort of much broader sense of engaging with society by working in the NHS or education or, or elsewhere, including the military, giving them an opportunity to do that is a good idea. And I endorse the fact that um, what's just been said by one of the panellists, that in the US you can sign up into the reserves, the national service and so forth, and get help paying your way through university. But I, I think the issue for the military would be if we're going to bring in several thousand uh, youngsters to train. You have to have the defence estate to put them in. 
i.e. to you know accommodate them mm -hmm. and feed them and so on. You have to have the, the, the material support, the weapons and the training areas and so forth to enable them to do that. And you have to have the regular soldiers who will train them. And uh, there's absolutely no way we have the capacity to do that for large numbers of people. So until one saw the scale of what we're talking about here, it would be quite difficult to make a definitive yeah. judgment. But I, do, I, I think the reality is we would not be able to, to take on this role um, you know, in the current size and shape that we are. Well, but I don't Patrick know whether you have right to... to say we need increased numbers and we need to prepare people for the fact that we may end up with land warfare in Europe in a few years' time. Isn't the major problem with the army actually the problem with recruiting? People do not want to go into the army. The, the company you have in charge of doing the recruitments are, are saying they're struggling to even get 25% of the vacancies filled that they hope to fill this year. And is that because of a PR issue? Both the panellists brought up different issues that the army might have. I could bring up another one. There's an issue with women in the army and keeping them. So how are you going... How, how do you think young people are going to react when you hand it to them as an option? Do you think they're going to grab it with both hands or say, no, nah, it's not for me the same way they do when the job's offered? Well, you've covered, you've covered a fair, fair few points there, but uh, let's, if we go back to recruiting, Capita, the company that got the recruiting contract a number of years ago, and I was the army advisor to the House of Commons Defence Committee at the time, Capita moved to a system, you know, in inverted commas, a, a modern IT system of recruiting. And it required youngsters to go online, fill in all sorts of form, tick all sorts of boxes, and so on and so forth. And my own grandson tried to do this and just gave up after a while. I think this capita contract has not been well thought through and it certainly should have been you know, something done about it some time ago. And we are now putting soldiers back into recruiting offices so that youngsters can go in and meet a soldier face to face and have a conversation. And then the, th the process moved much quicker. I mean, youngsters are waiting literally a year or 18 months before they go through the system. And quite understandably, most of them say, thanks very much, I'll go and find something well, else to do. Well, it's interesting that so you say that because we, we did do a part um, a couple of weeks ago on the rules in terms of the, the army has in order to be recruited and how tight they are. Things like neck tattoos would stop you from getting into the army, apparently. And our panellist at the time, Mark, Mike Patry, had said that you need to get that back. You need to get the soldiers into universities and things and allow a bit of a face-to-face -face meet. Um, Tim, stay with us. I just want to go to some calls now and find out what the viewers think. And from Hart Okay. What's your thoughts on this? Do you think that uh, paying students to do a bit of military training might encourage them to join the reservists? Well, I don't know about paying them, but I've got twins that are 27 now. And when they were six, uh, my son and my daughter went to sea cadets and they learned how to march. They wore a the uniform. It was taught by ex-naval staff. And it was absolutely fantastic. We paid £2 a week every Friday. They went away to camp for a week once a year. They got taught skills like how to look after their uniform, how to polish their shoes. They'd run parts of the thing in the, in the hut it was running. They went sailing. It was absolutely fantastic. Did they end up joining the military? Yeah. Uh no, no, we're fighting to keep it open because the council are going to knock it down and build houses. OK, oh. but what I want to know is, and, and that's terrible, and actually I'm going to put that point to Tim, that maybe something like cadets would be a, a, an easier way to encourage people into the military. Yeah. I'm just wondering, did your twins end up joining the military? Because if they enjoyed the cadets no, so son, much... My son went to uni in British Aerospace and my daughter worked in a shop. OK, so... I was so, so the proud answer, of the pair of them for so doing the answer that. is no, despite enjoying the cadets. Now, why didn't they go into the reservists? What stopped them from joining the military? I, I really don't know. Boyfriends, girlfriends, I really don't know. Just life in general. I mean, that's yeah, an life. idea... That's an idea, Tim. I, I, rather than paying students to do some military training for a month, maybe just invest more in things like cadets so that children get used to that experience from a very young age. And actually, even better, the parents are paying for it. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's a very good point that the, the lady raises. I, I actually joined the army in 1964 as a 13-year-old cadet. And I then went to an army college and then went to Santos, was commissioned. So I did 43 years, man and boy. The cadet movement was, has always been a very strong movement. And actually, over the last few years, it has become stronger. And there are more youngsters trying to join the cadets than we can deal with, primarily because we can't get sufficient adults, rather like the scouting movement, uh, get sufficient adults to, to train them for all sorts of reasons, you know, legislation of safeguarding and so on and so forth. Now, the cadet movement has never been designed to bring people into the military. It's, been, it's always been seen as a way of getting youngsters in 
and helping them to think through, you know, their own careers and so forth, but also prepare them for, you know, being members of a, of a broader society to teach them some of the skills that the lady was talking about. But maybe Nonetheless, we do actually it's... have quite a few youngsters who do join as a result of being in the cadets. Oh, well, and maybe that's something to look at. I'm just saying, it's a very good call for man. Uh, Broderick from London, what's your views on this? Do we think we need to start paying students to join the army? Well, uh, I've got two sort of like questions. One is the the army and so forth have got an appalling rate of when some of the soldiers come out, mm. they need medical help and everything else. And as you've seen from some programmes over the months, the army people are sleeping on streets of Westminster. Roger, this is entering back into the PR uh, territory, mm. so I'll put that to Tim in just a minute. What was your other point? Very quickly, a question. Uh, the, the other point, if... if um, Young people who come from a not a well-off family, there's a chance for them to go to college and everything else. I agree with paying them, but it gives them youngsters something to do and something to achieve in life if they wish to. OK, so the, the idea doesn't appall you. But what about this PR situation, Tim? It's been brought up time and time again by, by many different people. There's lots of different avenues where the army is not doing very well in the press. Maybe that's something they should look at first in order to try to, trying to up their recruitment. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're, part of the, you're part of the media system, of course. And uh, a, a very good friend of mine once said to me, the media's like the weather. You've just got to learn to put up with it. And... <laughs> And I think there's a lot Which of truth Which is why they call me Storm. <laughs> so, uh, listen, the problem is that you know, we do hear lots of stories, of course we do, about people going back into civil society having served in the military. I mean, again, in my day, we had something like 40,000 uh, young uh, people who'd served in the military for anything from three to 22 years, and they went back into society. The numbers who have struggled as a result of Iraq oh, and Afghanistan um, I'm sorry, have been I'm, awful. And I'm, actually, more people have committed suicide uh, and then were killed, who served in the Tim, Balkans, I'm so sorry to have to cut you off at this campaign. point, but we've got a break restriction. If I don't hit it, uh, then nobody gets paid. So I'm going to have to cut you off here. Apologies <laughs> for that. Uh, but thank you very much. That was uh, Major General Tim Cross there. Uh, we're going to have to move on after the break. Has been.